Hey guys, welcome to Code Decode. Today in this video, we will be looking into how to design a simple short URL or time URL services available to all of us online. So today we'll be seeing how to design such systems. So let's get started. Please like, share and subscribe to support us. It takes a lot to give such content completely free. So please support us so that we can continue giving all such content to you all free. Thank you. Now the task is to design a system which is similar to short URL or tiny URL. Let me give you an example of this short URL, what it does for us. You paste your long URL here, which is somewhat bulky and not that readable. And you will get a shorter URL for that. Now I'll give you a simple example of a Wikipedia for the software engineering blog. I paste a long URL here. This is how the cervix works. It, you give the long URL, it gives you the short URL. This URL you can use, copy it. And then when you try to use this particular short URL, there will be a redirection. If you can see, there is a redirection on the URL. Initially, it was the short URL, which was internally being redirected to the Wikipedia page for the software engineering. So this is how the short URL services work internally. You give the long URL, they give you the short URL, internally they redirect you when you hit this particular short URL. There are many advantages. It is shorter, it is easily handleable, it is easily shareable and also there are multiple disadvantages we will see later in this video. So these URL shortening services, there is a long URL here and what you get is a short URL. So these short aliases for your long URLs are commonly referred to as a short links. So this is a short link for your long URL. Upon clicking these short links, you will get redirected to the long original URLs and that's the functionality. This is one of the functionality to give a short URL to you to use it and then on hitting the redirection is the next functionality that is given to you. Hey guys, there is a super amazing app called as Next Level recently launched by an academy for you. Next Level is gamified coding competition platform for you to showcase your expertise and skills and get professional ratings. The better is the professional rating, the better is your job opportunities. Yes, this is the application where you will have job opportunities out there for you, waiting for you. This app is now available on iOS as well. The playing time is also increased from 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. When you can play with your opponents. Also, they have amazing prizes for rank 1, they have MacBook Air, rank 2, they have iPad mini, rank 3 for Kindle white paper and also top 25 people have the certificate of appreciation. These are winners from the last season for both backend and frontend development. They all received Apple and Kindle goodies along with interviews for the awesome companies. There are many coding competitions on the application. All you need to do is participate in these coding competitions. We are also providing the invite code in the description below. Please use that while signing up for the application. Compete with the people, win the coding rounds. The more you win, the better is your rating. The better is your rating, the more is the job opportunities unlocked for you. Yes, they have multiple partners across the multiple domains like in IT services like HCL, ECS, Infosys, SAP Labs, I and many more. At next level, even the physically disabled candidates can apply for Node.js and Python positions. You can invite your friends and challenge them to coding competitions. February season has already started, so please participate. The best part is the app is completely free and the link to download the same is given in the description below with the code reference. Also, do not forget to refer to your friends. Now, to approach any of the system design interview questions, in the previous video, we have seen few steps to do that. The very first step was to gather the requirement, get into the brain of the interviewer, take out everything that he needs you to develop. The end design should always cater to all the requirements, be it functional, be it non-functional to be jotted down and on your paper it should be there and then only you will be able to clear your system design interviews. So the very first and the very important point here is to gather the requirement properly. Here you can see that the functional primary requirement here is that you should be able to create the shorter aliases for the given big URL. So this is the big long URL. You should be able to create a shorter alias for this. So this is the very first requirement. A primary requirement this is a functional requirement this is required to make your service work properly or function properly that is a functional requirement second is the redirection so your system should be able to redirect using the short link to the original URL it should not be the case that you are you have given any kind of short URL and at the end it is not working so suppose if I have given something like this there can be a case it will not work it will either redirect you or give you an error so your short URL should be able to redirect to the original long URL. Secondly, removal. 
there should also be a permission given to the authorized and authenticated user to remove the short link from the database or to update the long url that you want to use it for the short link for example i am using the this particular short url for getting redirected to the software engineering block now i want to get redirected to suppose this requirement engineering block rather than the software engineering block then i should be able to update this long url that is being mapped to this particular short url so updation is also that a interview might require so these are good to have functionalities but the minimum basic bare minimum requirement are these two to create a shorter url and to redirect to the original url most of the services that you will find online will be able to give you at least these two and upon signing up and giving a premium membership maybe you will get more and more such better functionalities like removal updation creation of custom urls and many more things so that is why it is important to fetch all what is there in the mind of interviewer next will be the expiration time the short links must have a default expiration time that means after some time this short url which is mapped to the long url should be removed this is again a good to have functionality that you design should have next comes the non functional requirements non functional requirements can include availability that your system should be extremely available not even for some fraction of time there must be an outage that would cause a redirection error so we cannot leverage downtime because our system's domain is in urls and our architecture must incorporate the fault tolerance requirement so the basic requirement it should be available all the time at any point of time when i hit this particular short url i should always be getting redirected to the required wikipedia page we cannot afford downtime next is scalability that means as in when the demand increases that is number of request increases or the number of users increases or the load increases same user trying to hit multiple times then in both the cases your system should be scalable so you, what you can do is for having the more users you can have your database scalable and to have your more of the request being capable enough to be handled by your system you can have your servers web servers and the application server scalable so your system should be scalable next readable the url that you are creating must be readable it should be able to be compact and easily readable it should not be something like 16 or 20 digits of unique id you have created though if you are creating a unique id make sure you encode it so that it is at least 6 to 7 digits that you should have so it should be readable it should have low latency low latency says that performance should be really good for the system user should not experience a delay so whenever you hit a particular url say this is the long url when you try to hit it you won't see much of the delay so the same should be here when you try to hit this particular short url there should not be much of the delay in the loading so you can see a small delay but that is okay so your performance should be good now next comes the very important part you have all your requirement with you you have functional requirement you have non functional requirements with you now you need to start designing your system so the important part of the system design are the components so what all components will be used to design our system we need a place where we will be able to keep a mapping between this short url and long url so for sure we need a database here so there there, there will be a database which will be need to store the mapping between the long urls their equivalent short urls and the person who is creating this short url next we will need servers so you can have two servers here a web server to handle all your client request and an application server having all your business logics now that business logic will also require sequencer which will be able to generate a unique id and an encoder which will convert that 16 or 20 digits of unique id into some readable 5 to 6 digits of alphanumeric characters which is readable so in the non functional requirement we need re readability for having the readability the sequencer cannot give you the readability sequencer can only give you a unique id for that unique id you need something readable that is where encoder will come into picture so you need a database you need a web server you need an application server you need a sequencer you need an encoder now comes load balancer now as we also have a requirement if the load increases how will you make your system scalable 
there comes the load balancer to make a scalable system you will need multiple instances of server being deployed to handle your web request and to handle your logic for encoding and sequencing your long url into shorter ones to evenly or seamlessly distribute all the requests amongst the available healthy servers there comes the requirement of load balancer now to hit a database to reduce the latency the, the, this is also one of the requirement reduce the latency latency should be less performance should be high to have the better latency and performance you need caches which will be over a layer before the database so that you before hitting the database you search the cache if it is a cache hit you will get a better performance and good latency if there is a cache miss then also fine you will hit the database and get your data now there will be a security required there can be malicious user who can abuse your system by hitting n number of requests to your web server there comes the requirement for rate limiter let's see how we will use all these components so there will be one person called as client or user who will give you a request to create a short url for given in a long url the first point of contact can be the web server who will handle all the web request for you then behind the web server will be abstraction of application server where all your business logics of sequencer and encoder will be there what will sequencer and encoder do sequencer will generate a unique id 16 or 20 digits and encoder will encode it to some shorter form so that it is more readable so uniqueness is also maintained and readability is also maintained next comes the database this database will have the mapping between the long and short url and some user information that it will store for authentication and authorization to reduce the latency and to increase the performance in between the application server and database there will lie one more component called as cache so all request will first go through cache if it's a cache hit then the data is returned from here only to the client or if it is cache miss then it, the request will go to database and then it will be stored in cache and then to application server through web server through the client so this cache will implement your non functional requirement of better performance and better latency also there can be a chance that when load increases when a same user can hit n number of times they can be abused to the system so what you can do is on the web server you can have a rate limiter what will the rate limiter do it will limit the number of requests you can hit to the web server from a particular id so for example i have an id of code decode business at the rate gmail.com it says that only 100 request per day can be done by this particular user if more than that it can be a malicious user creating a wrong account and trying to crash your server so that's how you can have your system secured from the malicious user trying to abuse your system now when the load increases when n number of requests started to get hit on your system you will need n number of web server instances and n number of application server instances to balance your load if you have n number of web servers and n number of application servers how to redirect your request to these instances evenly so that only one server will not be bombarded with all the request how to evenly distribute all your request among the all the instances of the web server there comes the use of load balancer this is how your system can look from the top end there is a client asking for basic functionalities will request to the load balancer load balancer will appropriately redirect it to the healthy web server which is available to take your request which indirectly gets redirected to the application server which is having all your business logics to generate a short url corresponding to the long url or to return you the long url when you need some redirection so all your business logics will go here then there will be a interaction with database where it will be storing all your user information all your mapping information and there will be a cache for better performance and better latency so these three we are using for the non functional requirements and these three components are mostly for the primary requirement how will this system work so what are apis you will be creating for your system to work with the functional requirement so these apis will fulfill your functional requirements so basic crud operation we will be using the create the read update and the delete one these apis 
will cater to all our functional requirements say for example create so it will create a short url when you are giving the long url to it so when you give the long url the shortened url is something that is returned to you that is the create so it will map the short url to the long one and save it to database and also have a piece of code to generate this short url which is readable enough so all the code for sequencer and encoding will also go in the create api then comes the read that's when redirection free functionality has to be done so when you give the short url so here when you give the short url if you can see there will be a redirection to this wikipedia page so this is a redirection this is the read api that you need to do what it will internally do it will map your short url with the long url and return it to you for the redirection to the real original url next is update this is a good to have functionality where you will be able to update the long url against the short url so suppose this short url is getting redirected to software engineering i want to get redirected to the requirement engineering so that updation functionality you should have in your system next is delete you should be able to delete this mapping between short and long url when it's no more to be used so these are the functional requirements these were the apis that you're going to create in the low level design in high level design we just keep everything in these format in these box format in low level design there comes activity diagrams uml diagrams many many kind of diagrams which will actually define your flow of the whole system here you will just design a very overall view of your system high level design now what is the logic to create the short url which is readable enough the two main components that will be used here is sequencer to generate a 64 bit of numeric id but this 64 bit of numeric id won't be much of the readable to us to make it readable and better for consumer you need an encoder which will encode it into five or six small alpha numeric letters which will be easily readable by the consumers next let's get deeper into each component now remember we are just going to touch each of the components from the high level view the low level one i'll tell you how how will you decide what will be covered in the high level what will be covered in the low level i'll i'll help you decide how to distinguish between them now you have a database here now to decide between the no sql or the relational database that comes the high level design also so you know that your whole system is read intensive that means you will create a short url once but you will need to get the redirection using that short url n number of times so it's more for read operation than an update delete or insert operation hence it is read intensive application and for that non relational database is better because it is much more faster so our application will read more rather than to write more so you have less of add update and delete it is mostly once or twice in the whole lifetime of a short url more is the read so you give the short url to your people and people will keep on hitting the short url and it expecting that it will be redirected to the long url so it is more for read operation giving a short you should get the long one so this is read intensive requirement and a simple document having a user id email short url and long url with some extra metadata like created time and expiry time will be enough to have in this particular system design you don't need to have a proper user table as a different table and this mapping table is a different table between the short and long url that's hectic task since relational mapping having a user table different having a short and long url mapping table different and having the foreign key of user id in this mapping table this seems a hell lot of task which is of no use it will do nothing but it will slow down your system it will create lots of queries lots of joins and it will be of no use so here the relational mapping doesn't seem a good option to me it is a simple document having your user id having your short url long url expiry time these metadata that is enough so that is how we will decide that we will land up to no mysql database having just the documents and no relationships between them so in our application for this tiny url or short url design we will be using a no mysql database now which no sql database be it cassandra be it jumlin what type of database is to be no sql database has to be used or graph database has to be used will be decided in the low level design that's where the low level design comes they will grill you to a very depth of each and every component 
so that's where grilling is done in the low level part here if you even tell that yes why sql why no sql even that will be fine for you next comes the web servers and application servers this is where the business logic will be given that is application server will have all the business logic and this is where all your interactions with the client will be done so at one place it will be interacting with the client and other way it will be interacting with the application servers to get the data from the database or cache so this is the second component that we will be using you can also merge it into one and have everything at one place like we do in our spring boot application where we have control of as a web server and where we have service and repository for connection to controller and the database in both ways that is a business logic we have here so you can do it the way you like i feel that since you are doing in java and spring boot is much more efficient you don't need to make it two two different servers you can live with just one also next application server connects for database for the crud operations now since our application is read heavy and less of update hence we need to have the speed up retrieval of data now one of the non functional requirement says better performance there comes the task of cache so this cache is going to be used to speed up your retrieval from the database now it says that it is going to be less of the update and more of the read so here you can have the greater time to live because there is a less chance of updation by the user so that's how you can decide what time to live you can have in your cache for each of the entries now what time to live what strategy you will use for cache why are you using that particular strategy why why not the least frequently used why least recently used why less frequently used which strategy you use that all comes when you are grilled down in the low level design that's where cache is grilling is done with the with the strategies the time to live eviction strategies many more next there can be a chance that malicious users are hitting our application multiple times either causing us to pay a lot of cost if you are on cloud because it will ask you your servers to scale a lot horizontally so you will keep on adding n number of servers to handle the request coming from the malicious user who is just playing playing around with your system so either you will end up paying more or even your system can crash so to prevent such kind of malicious activity there comes the rate limiter on the web server and now at last when the load increases on the server we need multiple instances of our servers and also to evenly distribute among the healthy web server there comes the need of load balancer who will also internally distribute the load evenly in them so that not one of the web server is getting loaded but also will find out which particular server is down and will not redirect any of the request to that particular unhealthy server now which load balancer to use global load balancer local load balancer why to use that everything every drilling down on load balancer will also be the part of low level design if you want to know about each and every components and their drilling down scenarios like when to use why to use you have to let me know in the comment section then only i'll create a video on the low level design of it next comes the system design flow you have catered to the requirement both functional and non functional you have also decided what components you will use so that your functionality is fulfilled be it functional be it non functional so all your components that you can see here is either fulfilling your functional requirement or is fulfilling your non functional requirement but always end your explanation by giving a proper flow and explaining how each requirement is fulfilled by each con component so you end up deciding which component you used why did you use now tell how your requirement is getting fulfilled so the first requirement here was the create flow that is a basic flow where a consumer is required to hit the web server with the long url and in return it is expecting you to give the short url which is readable and that too in a very less time with a good performance so here consumer will hit your web server with a request to generate the short url for his long url for the website there comes the load balancer the first interaction of user will be with the load balancer it will redirect you to the proper available healthy web server then the call goes to the proper web server who is ready to take your request and will check for the rate limiter this rate limiter will work upon the user id that you are hitting with and it will check if you are malicious user or not so suppose you have reached the limit of requesting 100 times then it will stop you and give you a redirection message that you have reached the maximum limit for today please try again tomorrow 
or else if you are valid one then it will be redirected to the application server application server will have the code for the sequencer encoder which will generate a short url for you which will be unique also so how it will be doing that sequencer will generate a unique 64 bits of your numeric id now to make it readable you will need to encode that url after generation of proper short url it will be saved in the database going through the cache currently at the first instance the cache will be empty so that document will be stored in cache and then to database and will be returned to the client with a short url and hence this this flow goes from first box to end box in your system design thereby you requesting for the short url and you getting the short url so that is a primary requirement getting fulfilled with your system design the next requirement was the read flow that is when the consumer is trying to get redirected to the original url it is currently having the short url so when you have generated your short url and give it to all your people and friends now they will try to hit this url and get redirected to the original one so that comes the read flow so existing consumer will hit the short url and will try to fetch the long url to get redirected to the original website again the flow will go from here to end it goes to the application server where your logic for this will not happen since you already have your short url you will not call the logic to have it encoded with a sequencer what you will do is you will directly hit the cache and try to fetch the long url for that particular short url found great if miss then go to database fetch it add it to cache return it to the client user so that it can re get redirected to the original one so again second functional requirement of redirection is created properly with your system design now there there are some good to have functionalities let's see if your system design is capable to, enough to handle that also so for updation flow again what user will do it will hit the load balancer with two things the short url and the updated long url that it wants to be updated so suppose i don't want to hit the software engineering blog with that particular short url i want to have hit the requirement engineering blog so user will hit with the short url and the updated long url the load balancer will redirect this particular request request say it can be a put request which will update this mapping of short and long url available healthy web server will check for the rate limiter if it passes then it it checks for authenticity and authorization of user is he the real user who has created this document if he is the authenticated and authorized one then it will update both database and cache next is a delete flow again the you consumer will hit the server with the short url whose mapping has to be deleted in the in the database the load balancer searches for the healthy web server the web server checks for the rate limiter if you are good to go and if you are authenticated and authorized to delete the mapping that is you are the one who has created the mapping you will be given the rights to delete that so the document will be deleted from both cache and db so that nobody else can use that anymore also very important thing to note here is since you also have an expiration time in your requirement so you will also be having the expiration time in the documents so there will there can be a case that you will have a quotes or a scheduler which will time on time run on these documents and see if the expiration time is today's time or before that so if current time of before that is your expiration time that means your document is expired that means your short url which is mapped to long url is no more valid and it will delete the record so this automatic deletions will also happen automatically in your system design it should happen automatically and that logic also you will keep on your application server where the business logic is kept it will internally fetch all the documents of the database check whether the expiration time is today or before today and if it is expired it will delete that document from the database so that is also to be done with your system design now a very important part does this particular system design also fulfills your non functional requirements you can see all your functional requirements good to have functionalities extra functionality everything is good to go so we have seen four non functional requirements availability scalability readability and latency are these four also getting fulfilled let's see for better availability we have kept load balancer and rate limiter how does it ensures these two ensures that your system is available all the time if there is a malicious user it was trying to hit your server n number of times unwantedly your system might crash and your system might and if your system crashes your system might not be available for the authentic or legitimate users 
that's where the rate limiter prevents that unexpected unavailability of the system so it ensures yes you have system available for legit users also you have load balancers since you have multiple web servers out there bombarding the wrong or unhealthy or corrupted web server will be of no use and will give you a errored response and not the required one so load balancer it's the task of load balancer to redirect you to the proper web server who is capable enough to handle your request and give you response that means it is healthy so if these two together make sure that your system is completely available for scalability you can have two things first of all the load balancer we have used for scalability only you have multiple servers which is uh, how you have made it scalable horizontally you have added n number of servers so that when load increases all the users get redirected to some of the servers which is available and get your request completed with the proper response that's where load balancer helps you to get redirected to the proper web server next you also have database so you have used no sql database this no sql database is capable enough to be horizontally scaled so when the users or the documents increases it is this particular database whose instances you can add n number of times so that when n number of requests comes to cache or db you will have enough of cache servers and enough of db servers on your system with horizontally scaled to respond to all such requests next is readability to make it readable you have used encoder with a sequencer the sequencer was able to create a 64 bit of digits numeric digits but it is not readable to make it more comfortable with consumers or users you have used encoder to make it alpha numeric and of shorter length so that it is more readable then comes the latency latency is the better performance and the low wait time for the users that is done through cache so we have also used cache here that is for the better performance and less of latency and also you have used no sql database rather than that of the relational database to make sure you do you do not have to use joins it is not that complex system why to do that so go for the better no sql databases with smaller documents and your life is much more happier than that so that's how you have made sure your performance is high your latency is low your readability scalability and availability everything is there so all your requirements say it functional say it non functional is captured here now there can be many variations to this particular problem say suppose a requirement might change they want that you should be able to generate your own custom url say for example here the this particular url is auto generated by using sequencer now you want that other than short url dot at at mqcw random alphabets i want it has to be like this code it and it should get redirected to software engineering so your function your system design should be capable enough to handle this good to have requirement also and how will you do that you can have an additional logic added to your application server where a user is demanding to have a custom url so it will give you a long url it will also give you a custom url for the mapping part in the application server you will have a business logic to check if this url the custom url is fulfilling all your business requirements and rules and it should not be in its database already there might be chances somebody has all else has taken the word code there can be a very high possibility right so this should also not happen so it will also hit database and check any of the document is having this already if it is already having that it give error to the user no you cannot use this give the another url custom url or if it is not there then you can go edit and return the short url saying yes the short url is available you can use it for redirection to the long url so there are many many kind of requirements the interview can come up so it is your presence of mind and knowledge of these components which will help you decide where that logic should go how it will interact with the database and how it will interact with the user at the end so make sure you have a go through knowledge to each and every of the components you can use in the system design now there are also many things that i have not covered that is low level design the machine coding part if you want me to cover the low level design which cache strategy use lfu lru which one why not why to which database why mongo why not cassandra if it is highly available why not why why not to go to cassandra because availability is one of the requirement so why why didn't you use cassandra why did you use mongo db all these such kinds of questions might raise up to you which will come in the low level design for sure 
if you want me to cover such please let me know in the comment section i'll create another video on low level design and machine design for this thank you